This show's audio was via a Skype call. Views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Your journey on the path of freedom starts here. A life untethered with Andrew Martin and co-host Jeremy Nudell. Walking the path of freedom is a celebration of those brave spirits who have faced their fears and reclaimed their power. Andrew is dedicated to challenging the old paradigms and setting you on your path to living a life free from limitation. You're about to begin the journey of becoming your higher self in a life untethered. And now, here is your host, Andrew Martin and co-host Jeremy Nudell. Hello, 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 beautiful, beautiful people. Thank you so much for tuning in today on our little exciting radio show we have at Transformation Blog Talk Radio. I'm so excited to have you here. I'm so excited about this talk today. As I was just sort of feeling and anticipating this um, this uh, this show that we have today, it just felt really big. It just felt like there's a lot of things that really are important to talk about. And just the time that we're in right now, it just feels like this is such a potent time for a lot of this information to come out. And with that, I'm so freaking excited to have um, have a guest on uh, on today's show, Miss Katya Turner. She is absolutely amazing. She's an intuitive starseed activator. She's an empath, an author, and a teacher. She was born in the, um, as a very psychic child in, in the very unconscious USSR. And with time, she learned to sort of harness her gifts. And now she does... Um, she does intuitive teaching, intuitive sessions. She does one, one, one-to-one intuitive sessions that are powerful transmissions from clients and their higher selves. I actually did a, a session with her at the beginning of the year in January and, you know, just from personal experience, it was amazing. It was unbelievable and it was so, um, like she was just so right on the money with everything. So I'm so happy to have you here with that. Um, I just want to welcome Katya. Thanks so much for, for being here with me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so, so excited to talk to you today. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. You know, we, we talked a couple days ago, and, you know, it's so funny because because it's like even that first session, I could just feel like there was there was so much soul tribe. You know, I, I as soon as we talked, it was just like, it's you. Like, I know you. And, you know, we ended up talking for like <laughs> yeah. an hour and a half. So it's, just, it's so cool to be able to do this with you. It's like such an honor. Exactly. Every time I am talking to you or to Andrew, I just feel this, I don't know, brotherhood, sisterhood kind of feeling yeah. that uh, you rarely, rarely come by in life. So uh, aside from this being on air and everybody listening in onto our conversation, I am just so super stoked to be talking to you. Oh, my God. It, it goes both ways. It's so funny how lately, you know, just I, I would say, you know, I feel like we've all gone through such huge transformations in the last like five, six years. And it seems like in the last couple of years, a lot of our, because we're sort of stepping into our fuller selves, a lot of our soul tribe and a lot of our, um, you know, soul brothers and sisters are really becoming actual relationships that we're, that we're actually having now. And I, I can attest to myself and other people that, you know, that, that I have relationships with in my life. And it's just so beautiful. It's like, I, it, it, it's like that feeling of coming home. It's like, Oh, like it's you guys. I miss you guys. You know? So it's so cool to have that experience. Absolutely. And it's so cool to like have that experience and be able to share it with everyone, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, exactly. It's like we so, went through life missing this one little piece, like, we yeah. knew something deep inside of ourselves whenever we were children, but we were walking amongst people who didn't really fully understand us. And yeah. all of a sudden, now this, like, longing for this connection, right, this, like, this missing piece of the puzzle is filling in. Beautiful. And it's yeah. filling in in the physical world. Like, we're starting to meet more and more in person, and I feel like a lot of work is coming for all of us together in person, and it's just uh, magical. It's so magical, it's, and it feels like it's getting more and more magical by the day, doesn't it? Yes, exactly. 
Yeah. So today we have um, we're, we have a very timely just a topic that we're talking about, and I think um, it's sort of you know it's funny whenever I whenever I'm you know whenever we sort of do these types of things where we're having a sort of presentation or something like that. Um, it's always very in alignment with not only what's going on in my life, but like what's going on from the people in my life that I've talked to and, and, you know, the way you can just collectively feel going on. And that's like such a cool reflection in and of itself because it kind of, it helps us really see that we're all in this together or we really all are riding, you know, the same wave just in a different way. Um, so yeah. And so, and so today well, first of all, I just actually want to get started. And just I want for people that aren't familiar with you, Katya, maybe you know, tell them a little bit about you. About I, mean, I gave you a little short bio, but you know, what, what's um, what's been going on with you, and you know, what's um, what can you tell our listeners about you? So, as you said, yeah, I was born in 1987. It used to be still USSR, and it was a funny land of people. <laughs> I remember as a child watching those people play these little games of society as it uh, looked to me as a child. Like, I, I saw people put on these different masks that were very funny and manufactured, and people lived according to these, like, templates of, of mm. beings and personalities. And obviously, yeah, they were very, very, very unconscious. I was too, to an extent. Like, I had all of these knowings and uh, feelings that I openly share right now. But I came a long way from living and growing up in a very unconscious uh, surrounding and kind of um, brushing all of those off, all of those knowings and all of that connection, brushing it off because it did not make any sense to me why people were not living according to that. And so uh, I grew up kind of shielding myself from myself. Mm. I built a lot of walls around my psychic abilities, around my empathic abilities, because I did not understand them. Because to me, at that time, it seemed like they made me broken, like yeah. flawed somewhere very deep at the core, to where I was living in a different way that other people were. And so it essentially took me like first to turn on myself, you know, and um, yeah. and try and fit myself in this mold of how other people lived. And only in 2013, when we started working with Dolores Cannon, did I understand that I was not broken. Or at least I started getting glimpses of it, because we were producing one of her conferences, and I heard Candace, who I just did the conference with in Sarasota, and we're right now good friends and we work a lot, a lot together. But back then, she was just one of the practitioners speaking at the conference, and I heard her say how she was growing up, and she always felt like number two had a taste and a pattern and a texture and a feeling to it. And I still get goosebumps to this day when I talk about it. And I remember me back in the back with all of the production crew, I just kind of looked up at the stage and I was like, oh, other people feel the world the same way. Like, <laughs> the first glimpse of, oh my God, I'm not broken. And yeah. then later on, the biggest thing came whenever I started doing my intuitive sessions. And whenever I was starting out, I had no clue that I even can. So yeah. I started out blindly just because I randomly heard in meditation, started offering private sessions, and I thought it was com about something completely different. And then me and Andrew actually had an intuitive session, and he was the facilitator at that time. And so and he's like, no, you're being called to do what I do. And I'm like, what the hell? How in the world am I supposed to do what you do? Like, I'm coming to you for a reason. Because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, when I jumped in and started, it felt like I was jumping off of a skyscraper and there was nobody really there to catch me and I just kept on flying down and flying down but in the process of flying down I saw the the craziest of power come through those intuitive sessions and that's when I really understood that what I have been perceiving as a fundamental flaw in how I was created was actually the greatest power yeah you know, and it's so fun. I can just hear it in your voice. We were talking about the other day. You have such a strong voice. And, you know, one of the things that, I mean, just, just from remembering our session we had together, 
is you, you were so you had this like this knowing like it was so decisive what you were saying and I just I don't know I just love that about your voice I can just hear it where you I, I, there's this strength there's this power and I think we all have um, I feel like we we can all relate to that story a little bit where we grow up as very sensitive individuals. And we kind of think that our sensitivity is kind of what's wrong with us when we actually realize that it's what's right with us. And, you know, I think that, you know, this is the new age. We're really stepping into this new paradigm where we're, we're beginning to embrace these sensitivities as, as, you know, not only, you know, our, our things that we have that are about us, but are actually our, our biggest strengths. And um, so I just, I just love it. I, I love hearing that story and I love, um, I love what you're doing. I, I, um, if you guys haven't already followed Kati on YouTube, she has a YouTube channel. Um, I think it's Kati Turner at Indigo Diaries.com, if I'm correct. Yeah, I think the YouTube is called Kati at Indigo Diaries.com. Okay. So, yeah, so you can follow her there. Um, but, yeah, just, just really, really powerful, powerful stuff coming coming from Katya, and, and um, that's why I'm so excited to have her here. We haven't even barely, like, began to breach the surface of our topic today, but that's okay. And I think what we were talking about really um, is it really dovetails nicely into what we're talking about. What we're really talking about today is the ego. And um, we're about to go to break here in a bit, but just, just to preface this, you know, when I grew up thinking, thinking of the ego or whenever I heard the ego, it was always uh, had the connotation of like being a narcissist, being someone who's like full of themselves. And, you know, what there's this kind of new um, – there's this new paradigm that's really starting to emerge here. And it kind of shifts that whole thing right on its end. So we're going to stay tuned. We're going to talk more about that. We're going to have a break right now. But thank you so much for listening to A Life Untethered. I'm Jeremy Newdell. I have Katya Turner here with me at uh, TransformationBlogTalkRadio.com. This episode is brought to you in part by Moon Recording. Moon Recording is our proud home here at A Life Untethered and is located in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. If you have any recording needs, you should definitely check them out. They offer affordable recording services to musicians and podcasters, and their friendly staff specializes in recording everything from full bands to vocals in their vocal production suite. For one hour free, visit moon.nyc and enter code UNTETHERED when booking your first session. Hi, this is Laura Richer, host of On The Verge Radio. Sometimes you hear encouraging messages like transform your life now, become empowered, create the life you crave, and it all seems overwhelming and you're not sure where to start. I'm here to tell you that self-improvement is not always fun and easy, but it is always worth it. The path to creating positive changes begins with releasing the things that have been holding you back. Then you can create a life that inspires you. I know this because I've done it. You can find out more about what I do by visiting my website, seattlehealinghypnosis.com. I look forward to supporting you on your journey. Gifted intuitive healer and spiritual teacher, Sarah Luce, brings her unique style to the hit show, Small Steps, Big Breakthrough Radio on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in each month as Sarah turns reality on end and shows us how to experience expansive results with simple yet powerful steps. Expect an enlightening bend on what you currently believe is possible. For show details and upcoming topics, visit SarahLoose.com. That's S-A-R-A-L-O-O-S.com. Amber Teal, founder of The Healthy Edge, is bringing you the hit show Healthy Edge Radio, living with power, passion, and purpose. Amber provides the support and tools necessary for you to finally release the weight and emotions that are hidden beneath the weight. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information on how you can take the next step with Amber, visit GetTheHealthyEdge.com. Thrive is what we experience when our mind, body, and soul operate as one. When we thrive, we excel on all levels. Thrive is the mindset that matters. It is essential to our being. Have you ever found yourself looking for the instruction manual on how to thrive? You'll find everything you need to help you feel strong, powerful, and peaceful in your own body. So don't waste any more time. Visit thrivebygen.com today. Hello, welcome back. You're listening to A Life Untethered with Andrew Martin and Jeremy Newdell. Andrew could not make it for today's 
for today's show, but I have the lovely Katya Turner here with me. Hello, Katya. Hi, Jeremy. I'm so happy to be here today. We have a wonderful topic to discuss. Oh, I'm so excited to have you here. It's so, it's, not only is it a pleasure to just have you on the show, but it's just a pleasure talking to you in general. I love, I love whenever we chat. It's so much fun. It is, it is. So, today we're talking about the ego, and, um, you know, the ego is such like a, it's like the, you know, it, to me it's just like that, that topic that's talked about in spirituality that's just like, it's talked about it like it's like a category, like it's like, you know, uh, if you're learning about financing, it's like, you know, learning about it part of financing and it's really not like it's it's so it's so much deeper than that it goes so much more core and you know one of the things that I have been really trying to make clear for myself and just and just feeling into the clarity that's coming is you know kind of redefining what the ego is and one thing that I have been really um really enjoying just playing with in my life is, is, is sort of redefining it instead of as this narcissist thing that we should avoid or even something that we should embrace that's kind of bad though too, you know, because there's even that kind of thing in spirituality where it's like, oh, you should love the ego. It's all, you know, but like also I don't like the ego, you know, like there's that kind of weird thing. And I think to make it really clear, what I have been sort of playing with is, you know, rather than the ego being this, this sectioned off piece of our psyche, it's really a archetype of creation that's that it's its own self-sustaining structure within creation that is really akin to to what we like to think of as like the beast or like what we think of as like our carnal raw nature. So that's what I've been playing with. W- what about you, Katya? What what are your thoughts on this? So with me, it's been a very interesting process because in this like ascension process, I don't know what you call it, life over the last couple of years, I have seen my ego get absolutely destroyed, like dismantled in tiny little pieces. And um, it's been a very weird process, but I just kind of gave into it because I, like, I understood at some point there, starting with 2013, that there was something much bigger happening in my life than something I could control and that all of these things that are happening in my life are happening for a reason. So I just kind of gave into the process fully. And so what I have seen is little dismantling of all of it to where, um, like, one of the symptoms of it, I guess, that people could recognize in themselves is repeatedly for about a year and a half, I would go, let's say, into my closet and I would look at it, and I'm like, Ugh, this is not me. Like, this doesn't feel like me at all. I'd go buy new clothes, and I'd wake up in a week, and I'm like, who is like, who is that? I would yeah. look at those clothes again, like, none of this matches me. And so it has been going on and on and on and on. And you cannot imagine how many <laughs> those clothes I bought and, and let go of and bought and let go of. And everything about my house I bought and let go of in this deeper search for me. But then what I am seeing now from, I guess, my mountain right now where I'm at, looking back, is it was just, again, this dismantling, this taking uh, a puzzle absolutely apart so that you can look at every little piece precisely and clean it off of any dirt that it has um, that it has accumulated with years. Because think of it, we start developing our egos or recognizing mostly, not necessarily developing, we start recognizing our ego at about the age of two. Like whenever we just be, like become separated from our mothers and we start walking, like the toddlership period, that is when we discover we're separate and that we have an ego. So at that point, none of us are really, and I'm not sure if there are any kids that are conscious enough to see through the bullshit, but for the most part, I'm going to say 99% of the children, they just simply take on everything from their surroundings up until the age of eight or so. And so, and that is what we have been cleaning off. And I know there is a lot of people still in the process of that, and I'll get into that later, of how you can kind of discern where you are. But... uh I have seen my ego being dismantled completely until some point when I felt an absolute absence of it. I felt like, and it was like, yeah, and it was about two months ago, I think. It was a very powerful day. Uh, So I've been reaching then. So with the dismantling of the ego also comes a deeper connection to the the driver of your life, right, to your higher self. 
Yeah. I became more and more and more in tune and psychic and everything, and the connection was clearer and clearer, and not so much the connection to something out there, but to this presence inside of me. I could feel myself more and more being this driver. And then at some point, it feels like, you know how the scales, like they will go, the scale of the higher self was, it was heavier and heavier and heavier to where at some point there was 0% of weight on my ego at all. To um, where I felt like all that's inside of me is this driver of my life. And I could feel it with so much clarity and so much power. I knew exactly how to manifest things like the, the next steps of what I needed to do. I knew exactly where I was going, exactly why. I knew how to do it with ease and stuff. But at the same time, I literally felt like a skin, like a sock, an empty sock, like a yeah. container. I felt no substance there except for this really clear driver and this driver don't get me wrong like people will listen to me and they will think well but what about unconditional love about this and this well yeah it's filled with unconditional love this driver yet uh when you strip away your ego your personality and all that you you're left with is the again like that's the best that i can describe is the, the driver of your life your soul mm. The agenda there is to move forward. Every time I would tune in, and you would call it like a higher mind, right? I could literally think in terms of that. The only agenda there is, is, okay, I need to accomplish this and this and this, so I need to be doing this and this and this. But then, if your personality is not in the piece of the puzzle, and this is exactly how I felt, when the personality is gone, when all the ego is gone, you still feel kind of dead. You feel empty, Except for you, exactly, you know exactly what to do, and you're doing it with zero fear. So yeah, it's, that's I, I think when it's really, really I started funny. I think it's really important. interesting. I think it's really interesting because yeah. I can so relate to, um, to, your, to to what you're saying. Because you know, when I first started, kind of what I'm doing now, you know, there was this sense where um, I would I would sort of have to I would be the driver. I would sort of know what the next step was, but there was this there was this sort of feeling where it's like, you know, I know that if I take this next step into the unknown and really really do it, um there's going to be sort of parts of me that that aren't going to make it, aren't going to make the journey. And, you know, that is what kind of I what I feel like you're talking about when you're talking about like the dismantling of of the identity really of what it is is all mm-hmm. these thoughts that you, that you think of who you are, the the sort of the sort of stepping into the seat of the driver of your life and not in the sense where it's like you have to make every single cho- you know like you're you are like in control of everything just, but more- from there you don't even feel like you're making a choice you feel right, like yes. there's only one choice you know exactly, exactly where to go and you could give a shit what happens to everything around because you know this is what you need to be, to be doing that's it yeah no exactly and, and and as that process undergoes you know, you're basically going to step into more of who you are. And then as you do that, the, the parts of you that aren't in alignment just have to fall away. And that can feel like a death and feel like part you're losing part of yourself. And, you know, I yeah. think that I think that that's really what the beast is here to do. It's really here to shake up who we thought we were, who we think we are, this idea, this box, this this very static representation of how we think we are in relationship to the world. And it's there to shake that up into in the in the 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 pro, the way that the beast shakes that up is through carnal passion, is through passion. Your passionate approach to life is how that 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 very you know, uh, primitive, carnal expression of you. Like you and I were talking about how almost like that 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 lion destroy, you know, uh, tearing into a gazelle is almost like the same carnal passion as like sexuality, is the same carnal passion of like your drive in life. It's really the same energy. It's the same archetype. And I think exactly, as a society, yeah. when, when we let when we when we repress that, when we say I don't want to let that passion out because if I let that passion out, it'll show myself and the world, and we're terrified of, of what the world thinks, but we're, you know, if I let that passion out, then it'll show myself in the world a different version of myself than that I am, and I don't know if I'm ready to step into that yet, and that's totally okay if you're not re- you know, ready to step into that, but at a certain point, your soul intuitively knows, okay, this is what I need to do to move things forward and to really express and to have a platform for my most passionate expression. 
Exactly. And here's where I want to tie it all back to, like, the concept of ego and the concept of the personality. Because, oh, it's so beautiful. It's like coming together in my own head as we're talking. Mm. So the passion that you're talking about is, I call it, like, the juice of life. This is exactly what was missing yeah. in that moment when I felt like, okay, so I have reached the deepest core of myself that I could find that is, like, that is God in form, that, that knows exactly where it's going and why, right? But then uh-huh. the, the, the juice of, of it was missing. So the juice of life, the passion, is born through the personality, the personality mm. develops with years. The personality develops the likes and dislikes. The likes and dislikes, the wants, the desires, they're all fed by the higher counterpart. They're fed to us by our soul, but they are expressed through a personality, through a lens. So that's where that passion is born. This is why I'm talking about feeding the ego. And again, Listeners, I, I encourage you guys to be a little bit um, discerning <laughs> here because we are yeah. all at different places in our life. Because if I, like a year ago, would hear about feeding the ego, it would not make sense to me at all. And if anything, yeah. I'd feel repulsed towards it probably because <laughs> I was not in this place where I am today. And today I'm in the place where I feel like it's all coming back together. We're, we're picking up the pieces of ourselves that we left off, but we left them clean. We have cleaned them off of the subconscious crap. We have cleaned them off of the programming. Now we see them for what they are in their purity, how they were intended to be used. And now we're being handed them back. So the personality has its likes and dislikes and desires. And I talked about this in the video on my YouTube channel, how I see it as a basic, basic Pisces relationship. Two circles intersected at each other's center and the energy is flowing towards one another. And not at the same time, but like taking turns, one and the other, and the one and the other, and that's the relationship between the higher self and the ego. I think I think and, that uh, that image of the Vesica Pisces is literally the perfect representation. And um, we're we're right about to go on break, but that's that's what I want to dive into um, on our next segment here. So you're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. I'm Jeremy Udell, and I, my lovely guest Kati Turner is here with me. And um, we're going to go on a quick break, but we will um, be right back here for you at uh, Transformation Talk blogradio.com Chris Stanis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams she manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. Isn't it time to put your health first, to give yourself the gift of whole body wellness? What if embracing unconditional love and self-care was the first step to wellness? Could you honor that for yourself? My name is Audrey Michelle, host of Rewired Life Radio and the author of Rewired Life, A Journey to Untangle Chronic Pain and Endometriosis. In my book, I share how I healed from 17 years of chronic pain and disease. Get your signed copy at AudreyMichelle.com slash book, spelled M-I-C-H-E-L dot com slash book. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Tune in each month to Synergenetic Living Radio, where Rick and Grace Paris discuss the synergenetic way of life, what it means to truly change your perspective in life, what it means to take control of your life and manifest your true desires. 
For more information on Rick and Grace Paris and Synergenetic Living, check out SynergeneticLiving.com. Get clear on the life you desire and the current life you are creating and what is between the two. Synergenetic Living, living life loud. Now you can be a part of one of the most powerful programs to help create a more joyful, loving, abundant, and peaceful world. Every day at 12 noon in any time zone, join millions of other people around the world to spend a few minutes in joy, love, and gratitude. Brought to you by Robert Schoenfeld, host of the Art of Powerful Living Radio. Together, we can raise the vibration of the planet. For more information, visit globalmomentofjoy.com. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to A Life Untethered. I love the music whenever it comes in. It always like gets me <laughs> gets me bouncing around. Um, so today I'm here with the lovely, the wonderful Katya Turner. And we are talking about the ego, all about the ego, all about this archetype. And that's really what I want to stress is it's an archetype. It's an archetype. And when, when we talk about archetypes, we're just talking about the different roles that the different um, – let's say, characters in, in the cycle of creation have and how that relates to, you know, our psyche and how we're living out our lives. And, you know, I think, you know, just just as, the you know, we're, we're sort of moving from an old paradigm into the emergence of a new paradigm, a lot of the old ideas we have about spirituality and about um, consciousness in general are really shifting. They're really... They, they're transforming to fit in this new container that we have of this new paradigm that we're in because it's just the you know it's too big for it to to not expand along with everything else and so with that I think it's a really important thing to sort of talk about how um, and Katya you talk about this all the time or you know this is what I've heard you talk about is how you know with the sort of awakening the whole 2012 sort of awakening we sort of um, as a collective started to become more aware of these higher realms, becoming more aware of like the ethers and becoming more aware that there is a lot more going on than we've been taught, you know, but as, as that process undergoes, you know, there's going to be a sort of point where we have to dive back into the earth and dive back into the body and all that comes along with that. And that is including this thing that we're talking about called the beast or the ego, or, you know, even like people like to call it the devil, you know, it's, it's really just this aspect of creation, this aspect of ourselves that is here to be acknowledged and it, it will, it will be as bold as it needs to be in order to have its rightful seat at the table. And at the end of the day, when we give it its rightful seat at the table, all it will do is give us all the gifts that we wanted. You know, all it'll, it'll give us a platform and permission to really express the passion and to bring the passion that we wanted in our lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. I am just fascinated with like how many puzzle pieces are coming together as we're having these con- this conversation. And so this is something um, that I have been looking at, the idea of the beast over the last week, especially deeply. Mm. And what I have come to feel is that, you know, the, the devil and the God, right? People see them as the good and the evil, where I see them as the ether and the earth. The beast mm. and the ether is the yes. part of us that is of the ether, and there's a part of us that is of earth. And part of it, part of us that is of earth, is um, um, associated with words like carnal desire, right? Yes. Is associated with the sexual energy, and this is something that has been being suppressed in the human race for fucking yeah. ages. And this <laughs> is something that is now coming out. Hence, we see so much anger, so much rage everywhere. Yeah. I see it in my life, and it's very interesting watching myself experience those moments of rage and see why are they there. Where is it that I have not expressed my my creative passion that, um, that is being pinched off or that has been pinched off for years, and this is why now I'm... Um, kind of letting go of these pockets of, of rage of myself. Very, very interesting topic, and it's one of the most, I believe, important ones in liberating the humanity at large, because that passion, that 
carnal desire comes from the sexual energy that is a creative energy behind everything. Uh And that is where the ego, again, the personality ties back in, because only by acknowledging our personality, getting to know our personality, and feeding it and giving it what it wants, because, again, we'll go back to that. What it wants is actually a God's way of showing where to go. The desire is is a pointer of where to go and how and where to move in life. So by giving ourselves what we want, we boost the creative juices. We feel like we're filling up with energy. That yeah. is a creative energy, that sexual energy coming up. That is why it's so important to be in the body and do all of those things. I mean, and we just can have a whole new separate conversation on just that, on how to yeah. land safely in your body and feel confident and what, whatnot. But... By giving yourself all of that that you want, you feed that creative, those creative juices to come up and come up and come up. And only then can we fully create. Only then will that creation be um, even and firm and fast and precise. It, it, it feels like one of, you know, one of the big things that, that jumps out at me here is, is this idea of self-service. When you're in service of yourself... You know, and you're really allowing those passions that you have to come out, you know, and, and, and when I say things like that, it, we, we, we can think of like on the grandiose scheme of like, oh, painting or sculpting or speaking or, or you know, those sort of the sort of bigger passions. But I think a, a more important aspect of, or an equally important, but a, a, t- a part of it that we don't really talk about a lot is that there's going to be small things that you're passionate about every single day. Like, for example, we were talking about this the other day, Katya, where I wanted – I had this – my mom just got a new picture in the house. And um, I, I, I like cleaned the house and I just felt really passionate about trying to put this picture up. And I've never put up a big picture on the wall before. And I was very innocently – had no idea what I was doing. And I just you know nailed a couple you know nails on the wall. And it ended up you know cr- literally crashing to the ground. <laughs> like It was a literal uh, burning to the ground. But there was this passion within me that – that I want, that I gave myself permission to just go about it in whatever way that I felt passionate to do it, even if if it was going to crash and crumble. I gave myself permission to do that, even though it might not have been what I should have done or the right thing. It doesn't, no. There was a passion that that was there. I think it was an absolutely right thing to do, even though you have learned your lesson through it, but you have followed through with your passion. It didn't feel absolutely fucking fantastic to go dive into the moment, and, and do yeah. the thing that you want to do, even though it might have not been, you know, technically right. But who cares? You have learned whatever you needed to learn in the process. Exactly. And you have fulfilled yourself to the fullest. And this is what I feel like is holding back so many people because they are afraid of their desires. What if they lead me to the next thing I need to learn? What if they lead me to something bad? Will they lead me exactly where they need to? Like, there's not a a perfect fucking template of getting it right every time. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. We have to evolve yeah. in some way. We are going to learn lessons, but what does it, it doesn't mean holding ourselves back from um, acting on our desires to play, essentially, and to express yeah, ourselves in whatever way in the moment. It's like the passion itself, like a feeling of passion, that feeling of like, oh, I need to do this, like literally that carnal we're talking about, like that, oh, like I need to do this, like that passion in and of itself is the indicator, that excitement is the indicator that whatever you're contemplating, whatever you're, you know, nurturing in your mind, whatever you're sort of um, feeling into at that moment, if there is that passion there, that is the indicator that you will find more passion moving into that, you know? Absolutely. I feel like that feeling that I need to do it, that's life flow, flowing through you. you that's know? life. That's life. And flows. whether you're exactly. going to allow, yeah, whether you're going to allow or not, that's another question. But, but that's it. Like, that's the juice of life I'm talking about. That's fire. Yeah. And, and I think at a certain point, it comes to, it, it gets to the point where it's like, you know, how, how much have I put feeling into my body as an, as a priority in my life. And I think, you know, not, not that we should judge or condemn ourselves for not making it a priority, but it'll just show that when I have the ability to really 
be hone into my own senses and, and really become very sensual in my life, then I will be able to detect and have the discernment to know, yes, this is that kind of passion. Yes, this is that kind of passion and, and, and sort of have reference experience to know when I, you know, when I act with this passion, here's what it, here's what it's brought. And not so you can have a calculated idea of how your life is going to unfold, but more so, so you can feel really, really like bold and excited and confident about what your passion is pulling you towards. Cause that's a big piece of it is I'm very confident about this feeling because I know it feels right. You know? Absolutely. And this is something I want to talk here. Something super important I want to stress on the whole idea yeah. of self-condemnation, right? Of, of judgment of self. Oh, I made a wrong decision or, or whatever. Oh, so I'm, I might be misaligned in this and this way or I must be still acting out of my subconscious and whatnot, whatnot, mm-hmm. whatnot. And we have a lot of this crap going on in yeah. our community. A lot. And part of it is kind of PTSD from this cleanup period that we have just been through and some of the listeners are still are in that period. Mm-hmm. So, and this idea of self-service and accepting yourself no matter where you are, accepting your feelings fully in that moment, accepting yourself however you would judge it is imperfect, right? That is going to lend you in the highest vibration of all the vibrations you're trying to get to. That is unconditional love. That full acceptance of self in the moment, that is what Abraham calls um, being in the flow and the receptive mode. That is it. You know, we can sit there and meditate and eat veggies and go high up on a mountain <laughs> to live away from people. And it is going to raise our vibration somewhat. It is going to raise our vibration substantially. But the highest vibration that... Mm, I guess it's possible in a human vessel is that right there, the yeah. full unconditional self-love. And what what that, that really is. cultivates is a sense of freedom where it's a sense of, you know, it doesn't yeah. really matter what's here. I, I, I feel I feel like I am whole. I exist and that's okay. That's, you know, Absolutely. that's a really badass and bold sense of liberation and freedom. And that's really what we want. Forget about all this stuff about ascension. It's like we just want to feel free and liberated. You know, that's really what it comes down to. So um, we, we're just about to go in here break. This is amazing. I'm literally I'm literally loving this. This is amazing. So I have, I'm here with Katya Turner and um, we have, you know, one more segment left to go. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're listening to TransformationTalkRadio.com. This is A Life Untethered with Jeremy Nudell and Katya Turner. Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit SpiritFireRetreatCenter.com. Hey, did you know why they call the foundation the foundation? It's called the foundation because it completely eliminates your foundation for what you thought your reality was and creates a whole new space where you can have an entirely new reality that is foundationless. So from my point of view, they should call it the unfoundation or the foundationlessness. Either way, there's a big new global rewrite happening again because these guys cannot stop changing. There should be like a change anonymous that Gary and Dane go to. And it's happening April 28th to May 1st. You can find out about it at accessconsciousness.com forward slash global foundation. It's happening in Paris. Go to Paris or do it online or find a pod near you. These are all the options you have. And what else is possible? Tune into the wisdom of your soul for guidance on living a joyful life. On Soul Wisdom Radio, Wendy will provide inspiration to raise your vibration and connect with your higher self and guides. 
learn how to balance your ego and to progress spiritually on Soul Wisdom Radio with Wendy Rose Williams. Visit wendyrosewilliams.com or Transformation Talk Radio to learn more about a healing session with Wendy and her events and publications. Do you ever feel as if you're working twice as hard but only getting half as far? Are you trying to connect with your path in life and finding it elusive? Mainstream Metaphysics Radio is a weekly call-in show where we harness our connection with the universe and use what is in our power to affect change for optimal success and happiness. This hit show bridges the divide between what is and what we do not know. Eve, named one of the country's top psychics, also known as the MBA Psychic, invites you on this journey for this live call-in show with readings, featured guests, leaders, and visionaries in both business and spiritual callings. So join Eve Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com as she takes metaphysics mainstream. For more information about Eve, visit EliteTarot.com. That's EliteTarot.com. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to A Life Untethered. I am Jeremy Nudell, and I'm here with my lovely guest, Katya Turner. And we are talking today all about the ego, all about this this archetype of creation, all about this flavor. You know, and it's funny, too. Um, right now, we actually – there was a pretty big celestial event that happened in our solar system uh, in October, which was Jupiter moving into Scorpio. And, you know, it's so funny that all of these – a lot of, you can see a lot of events and even if you just go on social media there's a lot more rawness that is happening and even just your from from my experience like just in my one one to one encounters a lot of a lot of rawness people are sort of um feeling more safe to really come out and feeling like it's it's more important to really come out and talk about these sort of skeletons in the closet and i think it's a really beautiful thing i love that you know people are sort of you know burying their souls a little bit more because that's really what we need that's you know so we're we're, we're you know it's perfect time and we're exactly where we need to be um you know before i want to get into the discussion i just want to just remind you guys again um of my lovely guest Katya. she has a you know bunch of new stuff we were just talking about you know kind of what's going on and and you know she she's in transition right now and she's moving new, into a new place but we're talking about how all this stuff all this energy there's so much momentum towards um, you know, kind of what we're all going through and what wants to come out intuitively. And, and so, um, if you, if you want to hear more of Katya and I highly, highly recommend you do this cause it's easy. Just I would subscribe to her YouTube channel. It's Katya Turner at Indigo Diaries.com. If you type in Katya Turner on YouTube, you'll be able to find her name. And she also has some discounted sessions. So if you want to have a one-to-one -one session with her, um, they're discounted now. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, other than that, was there anything else that you had going on, Katya? Um, no, not really. I think my YouTube channel right now is the hottest, hottest uh, seat kind of in, in my yeah. work just because so much is going on in my life. So many like pieces of interesting insight that I am watching kind of come to me in my life that I want to talk about. So as soon as I'm kind of settled down in the new place, or maybe even before that, as soon as I feel settled down, <laughs> I want to record, I don't know, seven to ten video ideas I already have that is just topics uh, that are brewing, brewing out in the collective and in my life. They're amazing to talk about. Yeah. Um, one thing that is, I think it's really interesting, and it's kind of a touchy subject, but I kind of like that. I like going into that a little bit, especially now we're just talking about Jupiter and Scorpio, but um I, one thing that you that you had you posted a video on on people of uh, uh, veganism and how this sort of evolution of humanity and this ascension process of the individual is uh, obviously affecting every area of our life, including what we put in our bodies. And I think it's important to talk about not necessarily talking about like what you're putting in your body, but more so about how your relationship is with yourself in terms of what you're putting in your body, you know? So it doesn't matter if you eat this, if you eat that. It's more of, you know, am I, like what we were talking about before, am I, am I able to tune into myself to really 
tell what the, the there's where there's passion within me that I want to put things in my body because what we find is where there's passion within you like if there's passion within you that I'm gonna, I want to go have a you know a Philly cheesesteak or whatever and you're repressing that passion within you it has to resolve the energy that's has repressing to go that beast yep yep yeah yeah so tell me tell me uh, about that I, we can have a separate segment on just yeah. this it's such a big topic and I think we will do some videos together discussing it because there's just totally. it's, it's a very hot topic that I see and, and how it's coming up in our community is honestly bewildering to watch. Like I never yeah. thought that there's so much still judgment and kind of holding on to certain specific ideas about how things should be and like holding these boxes and whatnot. But um, I feel like the most like to generalize the whole the whole idea is. So many people believe that, well, if you're being pulled back to eat meat again, you're somehow reverting back, or it's your subconscious, blah, blah, blah. People comment things like, resist the programming, or resist the... Well, first of all, what have we have been doing for the last two years if we're still resisting ourselves, right? So, but then at the same time, this is what you're ta- you were talking about, that knowing the rightness of the moment and that passion, yeah. right? You cannot um, miss that, at least to me at this point and wherever I am at. There is, uh, there's just no mistaking the feeling of rightness. And when yes. I know that my body is asking for something specific, it is the knowing beyond the knowing of the mind. It is the knowing that gets you everything you need to know in your intuitive session when I'm talking to your higher self. Like, it is the same No, The strength of the knowing is, is crazy and it's undeniable. And, um, again, a lot of people are still kind of, I guess, afraid of themselves in a way because of their own judgments, because of the structures that yeah. they have put on to reality of how it's presumably supposed to be working. Um and hence a bunch of problems come out around this this topic of discussion. But, um, yeah, it's all about the connection to self, and this is what we have been working uh, on in the past couple of years. And there is a point in each of our lives when it becomes undeniable. And listening to that is, is all that it takes, and there's no right and wrongs here. Like, we should, we should have thrown away all the boxes of judgment by now, I feel like, altogether. What's right yeah. for you might not be right for me, and what's right for me might right. not be right for you or for a neighbor down the street. And the only thing that's right for me to do is the thing that I feel like is right for me to do. That's it. Right. Yeah. And I, and I think that you know, getting more intimate with yourself. So you. So it's not even a question of what should I do. It's more like what does it feel right to do. I think that is really the paradigm shift in, in and of itself. And you know. At a certain point, when I when I just look back on my on my own journey through all of this. The one thing that I have really benefited from in terms of – because, you know, we can talk about, oh, it's important to become sensitive with your with your vessel so you can know what, what the message is that it's giving you. is. But at a certain point, for me, how I have been able to do that is to really sort of push the edge of of being able to feel into myself. So, for example, if I'm not feeling like I want food and – you know, it's like maybe five or six at night and I straight up like just don't have a, a craving for any food or I'm not excited about putting anything in my body and I do it anyway. I feel like that is the sort of handicap that's sort of we're coddling ourselves a little bit because we're afraid of like, you know, pushing the societal norms of, OK, maybe I shouldn't I should just not eat today. Like that's such a wrong thing in our society. And it's not. It's like what is wrong with not putting food in your body if your body doesn't want it? There's nothing wrong with that. So exactly. it's really pushing past the societal sort of things and not necessarily what I should do, but what feels right to do and trusting yourself. Because if you trust yourself of what feels right to do and it may be like, you know, go, it maybe is a little pushes against some of like those societal beliefs that you have, you know, we're afraid as the individual that those societal beliefs, when those fall away, that we're going to lose part of ourselves. But what we learn is that it actually allows us to step into more of ourselves because we're stepping into the unknown. Absolutely. I don't know. By now in my life, screw societal norms. Like I'm not living to please anybody. It's my (laughs) life. It's me and myself. And that's the integrity that I want to live out. Like every night when I'm going to bed, I want to be able to look in my eyes when I look in the mirror and feel like I have done the best by my side. 
by my side, not anybody else's side. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to die with myself with one day. Right. Nobody else. That's huge. And at that yes. point, it's not going to fucking matter what anybody else thinks, what society has come up with, the right and the wrong. Like, this judgment part, we need to uh, do a big detox of the judgment. Any sort of labeling, any sort of judgment, that's the, even like the normal judgments that we make about life, in, in our head as we're going about and narrating it. Like, that narrating part, that is all the judgment part. Okay, we have agreed that this <laughs> is a chair, so in my head now, all right, the chair is blue. And, you know, the blue chair or the red chair, although we've seen on Facebook, <laughs> it turns out even that causes crap. <laughs> but in general, <laughs> that's not going to be a point of friction, right? But the judgment, that's where the friction starts, is because if you have any sort of box of this is how it should be or, or this is what's right, there's going to be inevitable division. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I'm so, yeah. I'm so, so excited to, I know we're going to talk more about this. I don't know how it's going to happen, but we're definitely going to talk more about this. So guys, if you've enjoyed this, thank you so much for being here. We only have like about a minute left. And so I just want to wrap this up, but thank you so much for listening again. Uh, look up Katya and you know, stay tuned for some stuff that we're going to put out. But um, thank you so much for being here. We love you. Thank you so much Katya for being here with us. It's been such a pleasure. We have to have like 20 more of these conversations so that we can get it all. <laughs> oh, we will. Chest. We will. <laughs> all right, guys, you're listening to A Life Untethered with Andrew Martin and uh, Jeremy Newdell. It's been an honor. We love you, and we'll talk to see you next time. You've been listening to A Life Untethered with Andrew Martin and co-host Jeremy Nudell. Walking the path of freedom. Continue on your path by visiting Andrew's site at andrewmartin.energy. There, you'll find tools and services to support you on your journey of expansion and evolution. If you missed any part of this show while you were there, you can also download the podcast. Tune in live every second and fourth Thursday at 12 p.m. Pacific for A Life Untethered with Andrew Martin and co-host Jeremy Nudell. This show's audio was via a Skype call. 